Hello there, my students. This is Mr. Gonzalez coming to you live from your computer. Um, welcome to the first episode of our Living Environment Regents Review. That's right. Basically, the purpose of these videos and why I'm doing them is to really make you feel at ease for when June comes around. Um, we want to make you as prepared as possible for the Regents exam. And I think this is a good way for you to, at the comfort of your own home, take a look at topics and not only topics and refresher for the um, information we've done all year, but also some of these episodes will go into um, the inside story of what the Regents is looking for. Um, how we as graders will grade you, what you get points for, what, what you don't get points for. Um, so I think this will really help you understand how the test is graded, which will hopefully help you do better. Okay, so let's start with episode one. And basically at this in this episode, we'll just be looking at the test. We're going to show you the parts of the test, and uh, in other episodes, we'll show you how to tackle these parts. But right now, we're just going to look at the test, okay? And holy cow, the Regents is coming, so we're going to start our review with this episode. Okay, so let's look at the exam. The Living Environment Regents exam is a three-hour long exam. And on this exam, there's about 85 possible points. And you'll be fighting to get every last dying point to do well. And on this exam, there are five parts, five sections on the exam, okay? So let's start with the first section. The first section is called Part A. And what Part A is, is 30 multiple choice questions. Now these questions, if you notice, they all have pictures. Um, some of them are very short, some are long. But they basically range in topics from everything we've done from September all the way to June. So these questions cover everything, okay? There's 30 multiple choice. So that's Part A. Part B1, which is weird, but they call it B1, which obviously means there's a B2. But B1 is also multiple choice, but what's weird is it's not put with the first multiple choice because these are a little bit more involved multiple choice. There's graphs to interpret, there's data tables, um, there's horses, things like that on there. So there are longer multiple choice, more involved. Okay, and there's about eight to 12 of those usually. That's B1. Now if you have B1, you need B2. <laughs> now what B2 is is B2 is a free response section, short answer, sometimes multiple choice, reading comprehension, and graphing, okay? So the one thing you'll notice from this picture for B2, there are lines on there. And what do you think you do in those lines? Well, you write short answer, and that's what you'll be doing on there. And in another episode, we'll go into um, what you should write on the lines and what you should stay away from writing on the lines and what we look for. Also on B2, um, short answer, there is a graph. Now, pretty much every year there's a graph. Every now and then there isn't a graph, but chances are there is. So we'll go over how to graph, how to get points on the graph. Um, and it's something to definitely get all the points for because it's not difficult. And then usually some short answer questions on the graph are usually under it, okay? Something else in B2 is reading comprehension. Um, you'll get a very long, involved paragraph about some science topic. This one happens to be on in search of low allergy peanut. And what you'll do is you read the paragraph, and then there's reading comprehension questions. Usually multiple choice, maybe a fill-in answer. Okay, but in B2, the reading comprehension is pretty quick, meaning multiple choice, nothing too involved. Okay, part C. Ah, part C. Part C is kind of known as the long section. <laughs> uh, it's extended response, designing an experiment, and reading comprehension, usually. Now, if you notice from this, there's lots of lines, many lines. Um, but don't let that scare you, because if you notice something else, on a lot of questions, there's some dots called bullets. Now, what's cool about that is basically that's what the Regents is looking for, anything that's written on a bullet. So really, you're kind of just answering what they'd want um, on those bullets. You'll see some short answer as well. And one thing that's really famous on Part C is 
experimentation, how to design an effective experiment. So this is where you write out a hypothesis, where you set up a control group, experimental group. So on part C, that's where you'll, where, where you'll be showing off um, your experimental design. Again, almost on every year, okay? Now reading comprehension is also on the regents, I'm sorry, on part C, but what's weird, with what's different with this one than the reading comprehension that we did in part B2 is B2 is usually short answer and multiple choice. The reading comprehension on part C is, again, another paragraph. Like this one goes into uh, the cargo ships traveling to Great Lakes and the, the zebra mussels. Um, you'll read that, and then basically at the bottom, instead of multiple choice, you get bullets again. So you'll be doing kind of short answer uh, question answer. Now part D is basically the state lab questions. Remember those great labs? Remember, remember those state labs you did? You spent so much time on? Well, this is the section that will go over those labs. And this section is not hard. If you did the labs, if you were at the labs and answered the questions, just a quick refresher review, um, you'll do well in this part. It's not tough. Um, if you notice, this is the, this question was with the, when you built the cell with iodine, glucose, starch. Um, and in another episode, we'll go over all these labs so you feel comfortable, okay? So that's part D, the state labs. So for this section right here, what we're going to do is actually just look at the answer sheet that you fill out. This is actually the first thing you do on the Regents. You rip this sheet out from the back, and all your multiple choice will go on here. If you notice in the upper right, there's a box. On that box, you actually see all the possible points for each section. So A, B1, B2, C, and D actually has a number next to it. It's hard for you to see, but it's on there. The last thing is make sure always you sign your answer sheet. It's important to sign your answer sheet to make sure that your Regents is valid. So that's the end of episode one in our Regents review. See you next time.